self-driving cars, soon to take over the world, they say. There are already hundreds of thousands of these semi-autonomous vehicles on the roads. Self-driving cars pose an ethical issue very similar to that which many of us have come across before. The ethical issue is the Charlie problem theory. This can be applied to self-driving cars in crash scenarios. As you can see here, we have a visual representation of the trolley problem. Here we have a train coming down the track. But there's two pathways. One is with a singular person, whereas the other is with three people. Now, do we switch it to save these three in return for one life? Here we can see the trolley problem in action. Here is a self-driving car, which is about to go forward, killing all four people in the car. Should the car there swerve left, killing this one person, or swerve right, killing two people in this car? After conducting a survey, we realised that most people said that they would take the utilitarian approach. So in this scenario, this car would swerve to the left, killing one person. But we can now ask two questions. A. Who gets to decide who lives and dies? And B. Whose ultimate responsibility is it? Now there are three people who could be given responsibility uh, for these deaths. It could be the owner of the self-driving car themselves, the company that actually sells these cars, and the programmer of the self-driving car. Currently, the responsibility for any deaths or accidents in an autonomous vehicle would be the responsibility of the owner. Now this is because currently, any vehicles that do have any autonomous ability are fitted with a steering wheel. This allows the owner to take control when necessary. But what about when we reach full autonomy? Well, this could be very interesting, especially when there are different scenarios. What about if there was only one person in this self-driving car, but four on both other sides of the road? Would the car go into the barrier and kill the owner? And would this still be the responsibility of the owner? Now the programmer can also be seen as having uh, some responsibility in this scenario where there were deaths. This is because it was a programmer who, decide, who decided the priority of the weighted factors, which ones were more impor important and which ones were less important. Um, it was this that ultimately decided the car's calculation and its intricate decision at that split second moment which ended in either one person being killed or ten people being killed. However, the programmer may be afforded less responsibility because it must be remembered that at the time when they were coding the vehicle, this situation must have seemed so far removed from any of the consequences that may have arisen when coding the vehicle. It can be argued that the car company are the ones that hold the most responsibility for the deaths and accidents caused by using this self-driving car. This is because they are involved in every aspect of the functioning and manufacturing of the car. However, because the car company are the ones that are actually the furthest removed from this accident, it can be argued that they hold the least responsibility for the accidents or deaths caused. In conclusion, we believe that the responsibility of self-driving cars still remains with the owner. Currently, this is true because there are still steering wheels placed in vehicles, allowing drivers to place any input required in such a scenario. But when steering wheels are removed, we still believe that the owner of the vehicle should gain responsibility. This is because when consumers are purchasing the car, they should be full aware of the terms and conditions and thus possible outcomes of owning this car, whether that be deaths or accidents. Having said this, the responsibility cannot be taken away from the other two factors we discussed, this being the company and the programmer of the car.